and welcome once again to another episode of Fintech Focus TV with me, Toby Babb. Today, we are heading back to Iceland to catch up again with GK, the CEO of Lucinity. GK, how are you? Very good. Uh, thanks for having me again, Toby. Listen, it's great to have you back on the show. It's a shame we can't see that wonderful view of the Bay of Reykjavik behind you um, with, uh, with, with the weather not being quite what it has been, as you were saying, for the last couple of weeks. But maybe the... Uh, the, the clouds and the fog will part for us over the uh, over the course of this conversation because it is spectacular buying that office. It's one of the offices I'm most jealous of in the world. But listen, lovely to speak to you again. It's been a uh, uh, you know everything I've been reading about this and has been uh, been stellar over the course of the, of the last year. And I know you've had some loads to catch up on. You, even in the, the sort of only four was it four or five months since we since we last spoke. So we're going to catch up on all of that in a, in a minute. We're going to talk a little bit about what's happening in the AML world where, you, where you're focused on and see some of the trends and what we can expect to see in 2021. I want to extend my congratulations. Uh, Lucinity have been um, included on the list of the most influential fintechs of, uh, of 2021 in the Financial Technologist magazine, which we're delighted to share you in. I know you've written a great article for that as well. So I'm looking forward to sharing that at the end of, end of March. But GK, listen, so much to talk about. Let's start off, though, with a little bit about yourself. For those who you may not have uh, seen the first uh, first episode, tell us a little bit about yourself and Lucinity, if you would. Yeah, so basically, uh, Lucinity is a, a two-year-old, uh, a little bit over a two-year-old uh, AML startup. So, so we started this journey because when I was in banking, uh, so I was in State Group before, and I, I looked at the market of a, in AML, and, and I thought that the technology solutions out there were not cutting it. They were they were not uh, servicing service justice for for the banks. They were not servicing justice for society, and we needed to have a technology change to uh, really move the technology ahead from the uh, the technology that is out there that really was invented before the iPhone and really take the advantages of uh, some of the technology that has happened since. Uh, so we founded Lucinity uh, and we went after it. We are now a SaaS startup that, that gives uh, productivity back to the banks through um, uh, a method called human AI. And human AI is really the, the uh, amalgamation of, of the best of the human intelligence and the best of the toolbox of artificial intelligence. And then we wrap it around in a beautiful interface that just makes the investigators that are uh, on the front of the financial crime really want to, to stay in there and, and, and investigate the heinous crimes that they can detect and report to other authorities. And it's one of those sort of, uh, I, I think, critical parts to what we're seeing in the world at the moment. I love, I love the fact that, uh, yeah, again, this is a, this is a founder and a company that have seen a problem that they were enduring and, and recognised that there's a, a huge space to improve it and build it up. Tell us a little bit about that two-year journey. How's it, how's it been going for you? It has been a, a, a uh, how can I say it? Uh, because it's not a roller coaster, right? I, I would rather class it as we, we're, we're just on, on the way path to, to, uh, to Mars. So as Alan Musk will, will, will say. It started off uh, very quickly by us raising uh, two, $2 million from, from uh, venture capitalists. Uh, we, we then went ahead and secured the fir first client. Uh, year after we started, we, we, we secured a tier one uh, client, which we work uh, together hand in hand in, in creating much more effective uh, and productive uh, review, uh, review interfaces for, for financial crime. Uh, and then uh, we, we raised $6.3 million in, in the mid of pandemic, actually not the mid, the beginning, the, in March, yeah, uh, you know, which was, you know, a strange month to, to not even see the VCs that you're inviting in for, 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 for the merit. And ever since, we, we have just get, been getting our brand out there, securing new, new, new business, grow, growing the business, and, and, and most importantly, bringing beautiful products to, to market that, that really makes the, the life of the, the analysts, the life of the investigators much better, but more importantly, protect uh, the bank uh, much better than than old technology. Yeah, and that and that protection is 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 where you know, and this this comes back to the, the sort of age old uh, aspects. I know we were talking about product backgrounds beforehand in in our last episode. 
that sort of quality of product that, that, that adds real value has been one of the sort of core themes when I look at all of the companies that are listed in that most influential list. The ones that have gained you know, the most significant traction where the most excitement is are the ones where, where you've got genuine benefit from a product into an, a problem, a yeah. problem area for businesses that really, you know, really need solving. And I think that AML space is, is, is fascinating. Right? And I know you've got a lot of thoughts and predictions about 2021 and, and beyond. Tell us some of the sort of key themes that we should be looking out for that you're looking at and, and you're solving in the AML space in, in 2021. Yeah, so so I think that what we will see in, in 2021 is, uh, number one, we will see a, a, a drive towards newer technology with the change in the thresholds that, that we see in the US. Uh, we, we're, uh, this is, of course, coming uh, on the back of, of uh, very good regulatory changes in, in EU and, and now in the US. But, but the change in threshold uh, really questions the, the fundamentals of how AML is found, because, you know, in, in the end of the day, you know, yes, the money movement is, is an indicator of uh, that there is something, but really what you are after is the individual or the company or the network of companies or the network of individuals that are behind the, 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 the money movement. Uh, and number two, I think we will start to finally see a little bit of a tightening up of uh, risk-based approaches in AMO. So, so for example, we, we just came out with uh, last year uh, with, with something called actor intelligence, which really gives an insight into the actors, the, the, the persons and the companies behind uh, the, the money movement and gives a score, kind of like a risk score to actually whether or not uh, this person is, is doing money laundering or not over a period, mm -hmm. period of time. So that will, I, I think, this kind, these kind of approaches from us and all the providers from banks we, will start to change the, the industry from being a, a, a really a, a industry that that takes on the, the the risks of a client beforehand through onboarding and and through forms and and other static tech to really uh, really looking at the risk from how you are transacting, how you are communicating in your, your transactions. And this is really, uh, uh, will be a shift, not just to uh, th this year, but over the next few years from a static uh, score into a more dynamic, a dynamic score. Yeah. I think the, the, the next one that I would want to talk about is collaboration. I, I think that what we're seeing is, is, is more and more collaboration in, in the industry. And uh, and we we are seeing that in we saw the hint of that in AML uh, uh, five, uh, where uh, and and now we're seeing the call out from the regulators to say to to both uh, industry parties as well as uh, all the all the kind of banks and fintech to actually start to collaborate, but also collaborate with the regulators. And I, I know that that seems a little bit strange because, you know, the collaboration hasn't always been, uh, been, been there. There has been a, a really much of an iron wall between the, the regulator and, and some of the industry participants, as well as, uh, as the, 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 the fintechs. Uh, but I think that, uh, that that we will see in 2021 20, really a, a change in that uh, and the change in, in the way that you approach things, because the only way to, to capture money laundering is start to, to look at it across uh, more and more institutions and, and collaborate because, you know, the guys behind the financial crimes do not have a loyalty card to, to one particular bank. They yeah, start yeah. to distribute the, put, put it and they actually have a large innovation budget to, to actually see how they can launder the money. And therefore, you know, we need to be as creative as, as the guys that are manipulating the system. I think that's a, yeah, that's, that's a really interesting point, isn't it? Because with so, many, so much of tech innovation at the moment within the financial ser services market relying on collaboration, and probably the last two decades have been, you know, and, and actually, if you look at the, the, the whole history of the financial sector, banking in particular, You'll see rivalry probably dominating, you know, innovation a lot more than than collaboration ever has. But I think as the challenges have grown more complex and the opportunities have grown more, and you can take this through to blockchain, you can take this through to all sorts of aspects. 
so much more of it now in tech has has relied on learning from each other and you know be that down to open source technology or, or whatever, whatever else it may, it may be that sort of collaboration through technology i think has allowed collaboration in other areas to, to to resign so people can actually say reside so we can then look at problems and say right how are we actually going to collectively beat this industry scourge yeah. and that has got to be a better thing for, for for the whole for the industry at large right yeah absolutely and and if you look at the the history of why not collaborate you know, if you if you look at ten years ago, uh, the the thought of uh, of collaboration was a, was the thought of uh, Bank A and Bank B would share all of their data into a, a gigantic warehouse, uh, almost like a, a governmental agency, you know, or or a governmental agency to to start to to look look at collaboration. But now with you know, like you say, blockchain with actually like what we do, API pro, pro, process. Uh, as well as collaboration tools uh, that are in, on the f- forefront of uh, the fight uh, against money, money laundering. It's uh, just so easier to do that. But also with, with advent, like our patent funding uh, process for, for federated learning, uh, which allows you to learn across our entire network of, of banks that are on our pla- platform without sharing data, as well as with the advent of PII or personal identifiable information, homomorphic encryptions, which allows us to, to actually encrypt the, the, the personal identifiable information for of a, of a client before actually it's, it's shared. So you only share actually what you found, but not who, who is the client, but you can still use it in data science. With all of these new technologies, collaboration is not actually a, as a distant future, but, but more of a reality that you can gain from without actually the bank needing to be scared of actually giving all of, all of their, their, their data away. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that, I guess that's always been you know, one of the concerns, isn't it? Even down to the adoption of cloud and the rapid advancement of data. Um, yeah, in, in, and I say this almost every episode, it feels like now. For, for me, the world of data has got so many opportunities within financial services that I think have probably been neglected to, to where other areas of life, retail in particular, e-commerce, have accelerated to, you know, to provide you know, 10 times the value as, as, as other, as, as the financial services has, yeah. has probably been down to that sort of introverted protectionism that you've probably seen within, you know, w- within certain in- institutions, but, you yeah. know, for, because, of, you know, potentially because of regulation, because of threat, because of fear or whatever, you know, whatever, whatever it may be, or because of, you know, potentially even sensitivity and importance of data yeah. at the same, at the same sort of stage. So to see this sort of, uh, you know, aspects and these challenges being able to be, turned over I think is hugely exciting and, and, and opens up to you know to genuine pace of innovation to sort of uh, course through the industry with companies like yours who let, you know, let's face it five ten years ago may have really struggled with the uh, you know to, with the lifeline of how long it takes to get through a procurement process as a, as a yeah. for example you know to be as far along as you are two years into your journey is you know is testament a to the product but B to also the maturity of the industry that sort of called out for this this sort of thing and and uh, and and needed that. So, you know, kind of right time, right place in many aspects as well, right? Yeah, and and I think that it's it's also a testament to the need of the cloud. Yeah. So, so if yeah. you if you look at just software as a service in other industries, you know, you you wouldn't think about going to to Salesforce and say. Hey Salesforce, I, I want an on-premise solution t- uh, to you, and and I, I and I want all of, all of my uh, my uh, opportunities actually on on-premise. You yeah. you know the benefit of actually having Salesforce in the cloud and allowing uh, Einstein, which is their artificial intelligence assistant, to to assist you. Just mm-hmm. like our artificial intelligence uh, agent Lux helps uh, the, the reviewer out uh, in, in our cloud solution. So this is uh, not a, a new day. This is, I think, we as an industry cutting up to what has been happening over the last 10, ten years. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. So, so, so focus a little bit more. What, what else are we expecting to see this year? So the next one I, I would say is that uh, the behavior approach to AML. And this is a little bit connected to the to the threshold talking that we, that we talked in, in, the, in the beginning, because when you think about how anti laundering t- is done today, it's really rule based. It's it's uh, you know if Toby uh, 
transact more than X, then we look at it. And then if it does this, then uh, take a look at some, something else. But if you think about the way that you behave, you behave a little bit differently than, than, uh, than me. You be, uh, behave a little bit differently than, than other, other, other person. Uh, but, but in overall, there are uh, certain patterns in transactions and in actually how you behave in the transaction pa uh, pattern that are very special to money laundering that can help detect money laundering at a greater accuracy uh, and with, with less noise, but also surface more of uh, more intelligence into uh, the reviewer size when we find something. And we call that the behavior behavior approach, which which really takes the behavior of the subject over a period of time, uh, having that the last five days, ninety days, three hundred sixty days, and actually says that you know, hey, this is a strange behavior uh, in this person compared to him, uh, his peer group, compared to him, compared to his past, and and so on. And if you think about, uh, about that, you, you then take that to the next level with uh, the advent of, of deep learning, enabling us mm -hmm. to take in so many other factors than a rule-based or statistical and even a, a, a simple machine learning approach is, uh, can, can do. Because basically deep learning is the ability for uh, algorithms to take decisions on, on uh, hundreds or, or thousands of information points. And that is really, I think, we what we will see in 2021 is that we will see m more and more of these methods being, be, being deployed and therefore yeah. giving banks better protections and, and surfacing more as less noise. Yeah, I think that's absolutely the key, isn't it, about how, how uh, rapid advancement here in, in technology and you know absolutely as you say sort of AI and machine learning has, has allowed us to, to be able to you know really really provide proper uh, answers to some of you know to some of these issues and, and provide real solutions to, to people going further forward and then there's also macroeconomic things that are happening that, that sort of create a uh, I say macroeconomic but also just just standard person you know personnel changes that, that create uh, opportunities within this as well tell us a little bit about what you're seeing there there are many ways to start that uh, at journey because there has been so much happening over the past, I would say, year and a half. Uh, and of course, you know, the coronavirus and, and the pandemic has accelerated uh, a, a, a lot. But, but I think that what, what we see in, in 2021 and beyond, beyond uh, as, a, as a significant event, especially if, if the US will uh, be able to recover from the, the, the pandemic uh, quick, quickly is the appointment of, of Janet Yellen as yeah. the Secretary of, of, of Treasury. Here is a woman that, that has been there, done that, and, and really uh, knows uh, money laundering uh, or, or anti-money laundering effects uh, first hand. She, she's, a, she's a veteran, and she will uh, make sure assuming that we get the, the pandemic and, and, and the control and, and so on that, that, that there will be a, a much more, uh, much better framework around actually uh, anti-money laundering created in the, in the United States. And this is, uh, this is evident from, 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 from some of her first speeches where, where she talk about digital currencies, where she talks about cryptocurrencies, when she talks about other aspects of the new financial for, uh, world that, that needs to be uh, regulated and, and addressed and some of her, her concerns on all, over that. Uh, but overall, I, I think that, that the pandemic where, where, you know, what we predicted before, uh, when the pandemic was hitting is that always in a, a climate of, of chaos, criminals are able to hide. Yeah. So, so it's the easiest. It's it's like your your uh, your James Bond movie when the villain uh, disappears in 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 a parade, you know, in Cuba or something like that, and and, <laughs> and James Bond doesn't see him anymore, and and so on. They they like these kind of a, e, e, e events, like the pandemic war. Yeah. So, so what we will see, I think, not in 2021 maybe, but in 2022, is is some of the repercussions of of, um, of of that and and there will be a lot of uncovering 
And with someone like Jonathan uh, in, in the charts, I think that where the, the, the money flow flows were hidden, they will be hunted down and there will be a, a, that will create a caterpillar for we need a new kind of technology to help the financial uh, industry. We help a new kind of a technology to actually help uh, us grow and help protect the overall system. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that, that, that's absolutely absolutely key, isn't it? Yeah, that that sort of roadmap, I guess, of things that, that we can see see to to mask or to to aid, I guess, what's going to be happening over the course of the next year or so is going to be yeah. really interesting. Because as you say, yeah, I love that James Bond analogy. Um, I can actually physically see it in my head, and uh, so someone ducking into a, a yeah un, underneath a, a parade float and seems seems absolutely clear in my head. And you're right, you know, it, it's it's this this whole period is born. Um, opportunism both in terms of you know people to do things the right way and, and improve and, and develop but also people to do things the wrong way and exploit gaps in in, in the marketplace and look we're yeah. talking to that with sorry I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you yeah and uh, if, you, if you think about just money laundering as a and as an industry it's a 2.7 trillion dollars that are estimated that that are being laundered every every year and uh, the the official UN number is that one percent of that proceeds is is captured, but yeah. new reports coming out of the UN and it's still uh, in in draft, so so we we can't uh, officially quote, quote it. They believe that as little as even zero point one or zero point two percent are are being cap captured every year. And just to put, put, put 2.7 in, in, in perspective, that is the, the size of uh, an economy which would be between the United Kingdom and uh, Italy. So wow. somewhere around the sixth largest economy in, 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 the, in the world. That's absolutely staggering, isn't it, when you, when you think of it like that? And, uh, and, and then again, it comes down to the scale of opportunity within that. So to get, to get a handle on that, even by a couple of points, you know, change, changes the world. But you can also think about it differently that uh, absolutely we need to get handle on it but we also uh, and and we need to uh, reinvent the, our process to it because uh, if you just take two percent of that uh, that figure then and and uh, and the criminals that are behind it they are taking you know two to five percent and and actually innovating methods using artificial intelligence using deep learning using all the kinds of creative measures to actually game the system mm -hmm. and and that is another caterpillar for us to to th rethink our rule-based approach to to money laundering it's uh yeah the the the, the pure scale of it is mind-boggling isn't it and uh and as you say when you think about that investment in the war chest to then go in there and to continue to morph and innovate this is this isn't a uh you know this isn't an enemy who looks the same uh, and turns up with any prediction. This is this is constantly moving, constantly changing. I think it's uh, it's fascinating to look at that. I also want to talk about something we spoke about earlier. Today, we're filming on March the 8th. I know this will come out a little bit later on, but March the 8th is International Women's Day. You told me a, a staggering statistic there that 72% uh, of the victims of money laundering are women. Um, tell me a little bit about what you've been doing there and what you're seeing, uh, seeing with that as well. So yes, the, the, today is, is March 8th, with, with March the, the, the beginning of a Women's Day. And, and we are always uh, willing to, to support good, good cause, and especially when, when we heard the statistics that 72% that, uh, of women are, uh, victim, are victims of human trafficking, which is really uh, the, 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 a crime that is heinous. But if you think of, about money laundering itself, that is the, the, the crime that fuels crime and, and human trafficking is, is behind actually mon money laundering. And, and uh, what we wanted to do is we, uh, we wanted to, to make a stance with, uh, with women and, and with, uh, you know, uh, and make a little bit of, a, of, a, of an effort in telling people about the, this problem. So, so today we are launching a campaign with Auslaug Arna Sigurbjörsdóttir, who is the Minister of Justice of, of Iceland. And, and uh, she is a remarkable woman, young woman that, that, that really has, has come into a place uh, here in Iceland and started to, to, to uh, create much more awareness around the problem of money laundering. And really, uh, fixed a lot, a lot of the underlying, underlying problem that she inherited, 
and and we were uh, we were honored to to be with her in in a campaign uh, talking about this this important cause. Fantastic, and and with so much going on and so many things that are going to be happening in the in the marketplace. It's easy to you know to, to to recognize that there's so many things that you can do as a, as, a, as a business and so many different angles and I think you know one of the, the things I've always been impressed with is you is there's a real clarity of, of direction of vision of momentum of, about where you want to go. We've seen in a very quick amount of time you know headlines being won awards being won by Lucinity. Uh, there's constantly good press coming out about you. I keep a, a, a keen eye on it and. Uh, yeah, and the more I've got to uh, to see the business, the more I've seen more and more uh, of that press come out. You've gone from uh, from Iceland to, to having a strong presence in the UK uh, and now in New York as well. Talk about the company itself. What's uh, what you know? What can we expect to see from Lucinity in 2021, and what's exciting for you at the moment? Uh, of course, you know, like you say, it, it has been fun uh, the the last <laughs> year, and 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 it, ha it has been you know, exciting, uh, uh, yet it has been strange, you know, with the pandemic. Uh, so, so growing a company in, in a pandemic is, is, is challenging. Uh, but, you know, we set the course for here in Lucindy to, to make money good. And, and like with the International Women's Day, like, like with uh, the technology that, that, we, that we're put, putting out there, that has, has really, I think, created a, a momentum for us that, 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 that we were taking into 2021 and 2022 and, and, uh, and beyond. I think that uh, some of the, uh, you know, I want to gravitate again into the product. I, I, I love the, the, the way that the, the product is set up and, and I love those, some of the, the discussions that I have with users, uh, discussions with, uh, that I have with uh, the fintechs that are co coming on board we're in a significant business uh, both in the US and the, and and the, and, the, and the UK and 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 Europe that, that are starting to use our systems to to make to make money good and and some of the 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 the, the applications that that we we will see coming out is is more collaboration within our tools uh, more easier uh, way to to actually understand when our advanced human ai finds something then Lux can much more easier uh, explain what they, they found to the users. Uh, but I, I would say the, the third one, which I am very, very excited about uh, bringing to more clients is our uh, continuous risk-based uh, uh, approach using actor intelligence, which really gives a new dimension into how to do enhanced intelligence and when to do enhanced intelligence on, 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 on clients. Uh, but moreover, makes much more of a fair and honest assessment on what is going on in the bank's data and the, uh, and the industry data than has been done before. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic to hear. And, and uh, look, for, I, I loved our conversation about the importance of product and, how, and why so many founders are, are sort of coming through from product backgrounds. And, you know, that sort of legacy of you being able to sort of bring that into, into the party to provide a... a to provide a business that's got real uh, thought around what that product's supposed to be doing and how it's going to work for your consumers, consumers to me is the absolute fuel to have uh, driven the, the the tremendous success of the business so far. And I have no doubt is going to take it on to uh, even bigger and better things as it moves further forward. This has always been, for me, one of the fascinating conversations to be having in the marketplace because I think it's just such an interesting uh, topic that you're doing. I, I know that we had great feedback from from when you were on the show before, which we were so excited to get you back on on again now, and it sort of captured people's imaginations into it a little bit a little bit last time. I presume again you're very happy to uh, to, to take any calls and, uh, and and for people to connect with you on LinkedIn again to uh, to get back in touch. Yeah, well, our our, uh, our line is always open. You know, uh, go to lucinity.com. You know, hello at lucinity.com is our our, our email. You know, we uh, we're happy to to bring you into the uh, the world of of Lux and our advanced AI and and our beautiful in interfaces. You know, your your the reviewers interface and the investigation interface doesn't need to be ugly. It can be as beautiful as as a as a beautiful uh, car. It it and 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 so and that is what we are are doing at in Lucindi. Well, GK, you're doing it very well. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much for joining us again on the show. I hope the weather clears up behind you uh, and that view can be uh, unspoiled again very, very, very soon. Uh, 
congratulations on on the you know everything to do with the business and really excited to see that sort of international launching continuing to uh, to go with that with speed and venom and uh thank you for joining us on, on the show thank you all for watching and we'll see you soon on another episode of fintech focus tv gk thank you very much Thank you.